We got here about seven o'clock this morning, uh, pretty much on schedule. Uh, we found the creek to be in perfect condition, maybe slightly less flow than we would like to help us clear out the mud a little bit. But uh, other than that, really perfect conditions. Uh, we were able to work through the site in about two hours, which is about what we hoped for. And uh, just looked at the data, and we, it looks like we removed about 125 Nashville crayfish, about 30 of those little tiny juveniles, about so big all the way up to four and five inch size. So pretty good size distribution. Looked like it's been a, obviously a very successful spawning year. Lots of the young uh, walking around all over the place. So uh, nothing wrong with the, the breeding cycle or the, the water quality at this point. Uh, and we also got uh, maybe 30 other individuals of two other species of crayfish as well. But by far the dominant was the Nashville variety. You don't get them all. Bottom line, you're not going to get every last one. Uh, but we've been doing this enough to where we kind of have a little method where we pull the rock up really fast and sweep the net. You're going to get most of them. You're going to get some that get out, obviously. And then if you sit still for a while, sometimes you can turn around and see the ones walking away. And you can pick those up, sort of secondhand capture. I've been with TDOT since 1999, and this is probably the fourth or fifth time we've done a major job. We'll be doing this again in a couple of years on Nolansville Road, just down the road here when they widen Nolansville Road south. Okay. Same process. We're going to go to Mill Creek. Uh, we're going to find the muddier, deeper water. It's, it's going to be uh, probably almost chest deep in places, and it's really hard to work. You flip the rocks and the silt comes with it, but we have the long handle dip nets and uh, just go really slow upstream and kind of do the same thing on a, in a deeper version of water. Almost all of our projects have some tie to federal funding and even if there's not a funding source we have to have federal permits from the Corps of Engineers so there's going to be a tie to that federal uh, process and anytime we do that we have to coordinate with the Fish and Wildlife Service in Cookville uh, and this is just part of the agreement um, to go in to the project footprint and try to get out as many as you can uh, just so that we're not having a huge direct impact. Uh, what this allows us to do now is to create uh, a channelization to separate our work area from the flowing water of the creek, where well, I guess where the remains uh, crayfish habitat. And uh, then we can dewater the work area and pump the water into a sediment filter bag and have a dry place to work. This is something that was uh, known about at the beginning of the job. So as long as it's something we can plan for and conditions don't change, we can proceed uh, as planned. As soon as they give us the green light, we'll create access down to the, the side of the creek, the creek bank, and then uh, get our equipment down there to, to set up the channelization with these concrete barriers.